person. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey everybody, what's going on? It is Tuesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. We have got a monster show coming your way today. Because the story of Fernando Tatis being suspended by baseball for 80 games didn't just get flushed through Friday, the announcement, and then everybody's statement, and then mom's Instagram with the ringworm pictures and all this stuff. I mean, it didn't just get flushed through the weekend and Monday life goes on. In fact, the opposite. Monday, the story gets perpetuated because dad cannot... He cannot stand by idly. You know, this is the man coming to get his boy. This is not his son taking steroids, a performance enhancing drug, violating the, the, the policies of the league. That's not what this is. This is a witch hunt for Fernando Tatis Jr. Because everybody's jealous of what he has already accomplished in the game. So dad comes to defense and that is going to perpetuate this story in a big way. So. On Tuesday afternoon, August 16th, we hit the airwaves of 1090. We hit the stream of YouTube. Tonight, you'll see us on TV on Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, and everybody in between. And every audio podcast platform known to man. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, and even iHeart. Somehow, I still don't get it, but whatever. Grande, brown man, the story ain't going anywhere. What do you say, man? Listen, the, the, the most alarming part about all of this is now that there are multiple people not lying for him, but attempting to make it seem like it's not a big deal. David Ortiz blamed it on baseball. Mm -hmm. Let him cheat. Yeah. David Ortiz basically said, you can't, you, problem with that. you can't be exposing a guy like this. Like, the, the, game needs, the game needs this guy. Okay. His dad then comes out and says that, oh, with a player like this, this should have been handled differently. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, he should get he should get preferential treatment when he does steroids. So now we know what the problem is. Now we know how <laughs> well, we got here. I think that that's I was literally gonna start similar to you, Browner, but then throw it back in Scott's face and be like, I told you it's not the Padres. Man, look at who's enabling Fernando Tatis right now. His family, everybody, every family, family, players, everybody, former players, any Dominican alive. Any right. Dominican, anyone, <laughs> pick one, bro. Yeah. I think it's even crazy. Vin Diesel, who loves the Dominican in the Fast and the Furious movies, that might have gone over both of your guys' heads. But still, like I'm telling you, Brazil. This is the problem with Tatis. He is surrounded mm -hmm. by yes men. Yes. Mm -hmm. He yes. Is surrounded. No. Yes. yes. No. Yes. 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 He is yes. surrounded yes. by people. Yes. Who have you the man champ? He's yes. the golden child. Your father, pretty good baseball player, well known for hitting two grand slams against the Dodgers in the same inning. Against the same pitcher, by the way. But <laughs> Tatis is the golden child. He's the golden goose. We took a $27 million advance payment because we knew you were going to be so good you can pay that back because we wanted you to have a better dorm room when you were in the minors because we wanted you to have better trainers in the minors. And it worked out. Look at him. But no one's telling him no. No one, even right. still to this moment, no one's telling him that he's a dummy because let's mm -hmm. say it's all true, okay? Let's say it's true. Let's right. say his barber nicked his neck and he got a little fungus back there. And his mom posted a picture of his little boo-boo back there. And they go out and they get uh, whatever it's called, Tobafall, and they started spraying him down with steroids on the neck. And it from another from another country, by the way. That's right. not sold in the US. Now they don't sell it here for a reason. Right. They bought this it from the Dominican. In steroids. Exactly. They so, bought this from the Dominican. So right. the more you learn about the story, the worse it gets. Because but wait, but wait, no, no, but where, where, where it gets worse is is you are a $340 million investment, and you don't go like you don't come to the States and go to the doctors and talk to your team about every last little thing. If, if you have a if runny nose, them, you call the team doctor. He didn't right. come, if, it makes so much sense. If he didn't come to them for a broken wrist, 
<laughs> why would he come to them for a little fungus on the neck? Yeah. yeah I got a way to fix All that. All of this makes yeah. so much here's, sense here, now. Here, here, hey, son. Hey, son. I'm going to not only get rid of your ringworm. But in the same spray, I'm going to help you put on 10 more pounds of muscle. I like Don't how worry his dad, about it. and I'm only going to spray it on your neck. His dad was just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, he put it on his neck. And the next thing you know, he tests positive and it's all over his body. Come on, man. <laughs> like, come on, dog. Come on, man. Come on. I, I actually, I'm sorry, guys. You're going to have to excuse me on this one. But I'm loving this. Um, I'm not. I, I am. When you're, watching, when you're watching them get absolutely blistered. By like anytime they face a good pitcher, you see how bad they are. Mm -hmm. Oh my that god, that guy was last, good last night. night though. No, he's really know, good. But still, and then still, a, come and, on. But then like AC wrote his daily today, and he's like, when the Padres face a top twenty or something pitcher, they're ten and eighteen. They have like the the opposing opposing pitchers are like two one ERA against them. Like they're awful when they face playoff caliber pitching, which is the direction we're heading. So oh. I'm not loving this, Scott, because I would love Lucky to have to tease. No. Get in the hit. Nah, nah sorry, guys. Well, you got to hit. I'm, right. I'm, I'm admitting it. I'm just admitting it. I, I know that a lot of people are very, very emotional. They're, they're pissed at Fernando Tatis. Like they are legit pissed. I'm not talking about Peter Seidler or AJ Preller or Bob Melvin or Manny Machado. I'm talking about the person who goes to the games or watches the games or whatever, takes in Padres content. And I'm just basing this on the fact that when we put out videos on Twitter and Instagram where we talk about this subject, the commentary that you guys come back to me with gives me a sense of where your head's at in all of this. You guys are emotionally angry at Fernando Tatis. I, on the other hand, it really doesn't matter if it's the Lakers or if it's the Padres. I just love drama. I do. And, and, and I love stories that have tons of angles to them. And this one is now, th this one is getting Spanosy. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. well, I mean, listen, you, you have, you guys, nobody blames the Padre organization. I'm not blaming them exclusively. I'm giving them a piece of the pie. Because they're part of the problem, too. And Tatis and his father and his, as you guys call them, the yes men around the champ, obviously, they're the bigger part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But all of it is now, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, superstar athletes, international sounding story. Um. There's the baseball part of it. There's the local side of it. There, there's a ton of different angles. And so for me, I eat this stuff up. You know what's man. funny is that I actually now, I actually believe that his excuse. I do. I genuinely do. And it makes it so much worse in my opinion. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, Tell me what you mean by you're buying it. You mean like he, his answer was, yeah, I took this product for ringworm. And you're actually buying it now because you're like, that's probably what his dad told him to do. Right. So they so from all reports, it looks like this was something that happened in March, mm -hmm. I think. So I just buy it because I prefer to like if you connect all the, the dumb dots, it creates mm -hmm. one big line of, of dumbness, like from what happened with Tatis. Like, so he goes to a barber who uses dirty clippers, nicks them cuts him <laughs> he gets infected he doesn't have like barbasol or whatever or that that's that blue liquid that they have where mm -hmm. they put all their clips in you know mm -hmm. so he doesn't have that he nicks him he gets fungus he gets ringworm instead of you know doing the normal thing which is to let your team of doctors which at, are at your disposal 24 7 instead of let, giving one of them a call i'm gonna go to the dominican buy trophy ball where it clearly says on the bottle contains yeah. clostebol or whatever you, however you say it, which is a banned substance. So this is literally what we were upset about him with the motorcycle accident. Instead of being truthful and smart and calling the Padres, you then tried to hide something, which got you into the predicament we've been in for the last six months. So what this is, instead of learning from that mistake, you then... You're like, I got ringworm. 
I got this like random Dominic. It's like me going to TJ and getting some cream for some fungus right. on my arm, and it contains right. steroids because in other countries, a lot of things contain steroids. So it's exactly it's that's a perfect analysis and comp that if I get ringworm and I don't want to use an American doctor because I know I can just go south of the border, walk into any pharmacia, yeah. get the stuff and it works great. But I'm not a major league baseball player, so I don't have to worry about what's in my system. Nobody's drug testing me for close to ball to right. find out if I can talk on the radio. All right. Right. So. So, yeah, I actually but, believe that they are that dumb. <laughs> That's my yeah. point. Yeah, I genuinely they, now yeah. believe it because they are so nonchalant about this. Forget about the cockiness and like what he deserves and what he's done for baseball and being the face and and, and ruining his That's reputation. A whole, can I just say this? Can I just we'll, we'll hear from from Fernando Tatis's dad in Espanol and then I'll interpret because I speak fluent Spanish as you'll find out soon. But don't look. I at also me like captioned that, for people watching the show. Yeah, you gave away my Thanks. secret. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway. The, the the dad part of the story is just i mean i can't well i guess i can believe it i mean let's anyway, I, mean, I, I, can... I don't i don't believe any of it i don't i don't believe any of it i like how it's so stupid it has to be true like that part i completely understand and this is so dumb but it guys... has to be true but but again mm. how much do you have to spread for to pop on a steroid test about it and then maybe his neck blew up. Like he's like, damn, look how buff my neck is. Maybe I should just like, yeah. like, dude, dude, I'm looking like Mark McGuire out here now. <laughs> and okay, then I'm looking like the the, the third dude, bash big, brother. Right, right. That's <laughs> I, I'm now big poppy. That little poppy. Yeah. yeah, I'm not El Nino no more. I'm El Poppy. Dude, yeah. and then to not, in addition to that, then to not contest it as, hey, I just simply made a mistake and didn't get 30 games instead of 80. Like it, because even if. Let's say he contested it. He got 30 games. He'd still be back this year. But so for him to take the full 80 means that he didn't want to do any further testing. I'm Wait, saying hold this on. I don't, I don't understand the 30 versus 80. I, you, that's a, you a detail of the story that yesterday we talked about it. If you, right. if you, it's written in the CBA where if you get suspended all. for 80 mm -hmm. games and you are arguing negligence, if you right. can prove how stupid you were, right, and you actually did make an honest, dumb, negligent mistake. MLB has, the, be. MLB has the authority to drop the suspension from 80 to 30 games. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do that here. No, well, he appealed and then dropped it. Yeah. So, so Browner, you're laughing at me because I, you, you, Alex says you, we talked about it yesterday. And a lot of times things will go in one ear and out the other. Like people, hey, what'd you guys talk about today on the show? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Have oh, to it happens on to the me radio. all the time. But oh, I'm not my sure. God. Can I, I tell you guys that. just one thing? And I say it in jest, but I kind of say it because I kind of believe it. Mm. One thing Tatis has proven to us, and Scott, you've criticized for how honest and out he's been, is that mm -hmm. he doesn't lie or sugarcoat things. Like he didn't come out and try and come up with some baseball excuse of why he broke his wrist. He's like, Yeah, I got I was riding a motorcycle and broke it like multiple times. Like I crashed multiple times. Uh, I did a sit-down interview where I was as brutally as honest as possible. Like, I'm gonna play shortstop, I am not gonna play center field. Like one thing that Tatis is I'm not public, getting shoulder surgery. Right. I'm I, not getting I, shoulder. I don't trust the doctors here. I am going to go swing a bat when I'm not allowed to swing a bat. Like Tatis mm -hmm. has proven one thing, and that's he kind of mm -hmm. just is as honest as possible, bluntly as honest as possible. Okay, so if if that's the case and you believe that this is just really a dumb mistake by him, yes. are you okay with it? No, it's still stupid. Like, but I'm no, literally no, no, I, I, know, I get it. I get it. No. I get that it is stupid. That's what yeah. we're all in. No, agree. I'm not it's okay dumb. with it. Okay. I'm because of what I've said about the whole motorcycle accident. I didn't we all just want him to learn from that? Of course. And he hasn't. I mean, and that's what makes me so upset. Like, because when you have your daddy now going out on a podcast saying that, oh, it's Major League Baseball shouldn't have treated him this way. And when you have one of your country heroes who also got popped for steroids allegedly coming out and saying they shouldn't be doing this to him, this guy's supposed to be the face of the game. We need these guys playing. Because that's like, oh, millions of people will stop watching baseball. Bruh, millions of people already stopped watching baseball. Dude, Go sit down somewhere. The, these hey, guys will stop. They're not going to have anybody left. Dude, listen to me. <laughs> these guys, and maybe maybe it's because it's local here, and maybe I don't really get it nationally. I just think that these guys have completely overestimated yeah. how important one player is to yeah. the game. Have I millions mean, of people stopped watching baseball because Mike Trout's been out, who's been the best player for the past – eight years yeah i mean 
it, it's just or was the, nobody the, watching anyways well but the thing that the, the, they <laughs> have overestimated his importance to the game the yeah. game will go on with him or without him again i said yesterday i think the padres went all in on soto because somebody may have had an inkling that this was coming and that if they didn't get if they didn't get tatis back they didn't think they were going anywhere and adding soto was going to be the next piece of it and adding bell by the way which thus far I mean, listen, they're shut out again last night. So you got Soto and Bell, which are supposed to be a big improvement, and you're still shut out. It's such a – yesterday when listeners were calling, they were saying this is such a San Diego thing to happen. It's kind of like you bring in two big bats and you're still getting shut out by a subpar kind of team. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, but a really good pitcher. I understand. I got it. But, but really that's the whole point. You're supposed to be – you're supposed to be able to hit against – those guys, because those are the guys, as you pointed out earlier, are supposed to be the guys you're going to be facing in the playoffs. Yep. Those types of guys. Yep. All right, so listen, let me just say this. Lots to get to today. A lot to get to. But I will just tell you guys this. Um, last night, I was watching this Padres game, but I was also helping my daughter, uh, who's 20 years old now, Jillian, get ready to go back to Boise State, which she did this morning. Fellas. You guys don't quite get it. I mean, people were giving me a hard time yesterday in the YouTube chat about as I'm getting older, I'm getting more emotional. I openly admit that. I've told the story a million times about how every time I go to lunch with Jim Lampley, it turns into him crying as he's telling a story about something, you know? That's got nothing to do with his his life, just his passion, you know? Um, one time we were having lunch one day and Lampley's telling me the story about how Muhammad Ali disrespected Joe Frazier. And I swear to you, he's he's like bawling. Marty Schottenheimer one time is literally sitting in a production meeting talking about wanting to bring a Super Bowl to San Diego, by the way, because at the time he was saying, I want to help keep the Chargers in San Diego. I want to help get a new stadium. I want to win a Super Bowl. Crying, hysterical. Fellas, I'm getting older. I'm getting more emotional. It's uh, menopause, I think it's called now. Have you heard of this? <laughs> I've never True. heard of it. Oh, being old, man. I think your problem is when you get older, more things have value to them because you, you know, you're on the other side of you know, <laughs> middle age. And so mm -hmm. you kind of, you start to see things in perspective more. And so the little things that when you were 25, now you're 51, you, well, you know, they soften you that's, up, bro. That's, uh, I was listening to a, a Pearl Jam concert the other day on Sirius when I was driving down the road. Eddie Vedder's talking just about that exact same thing. He's like, you know, now that I'm a bit older and I've got so much more to lose, you know, family and friends and, and you know, life and whatever. Like, you know, it's not like it was when I was 25. I mean, Browner, you pretty much took the words right out of Eddie Vedder's mouth. But I'll tell you guys. Talked to Eddie um, the other day. You, oh, you guys spoke? You and Eddie? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, well, he, you guys talked for again? He played for Pearl Jam? Right, right. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sent a daughter on Saturday to, to college. And I told the story, you know, yesterday, but send her by herself, which made me feel like awfully guilty. Thank goodness I didn't go with her because, man, I got – the little one who just started high school today going into her junior year. And then the older one took off this morning to start driving up to Boise to get back to Boise state. And the kid, my son's already gone guys. I'm in my house by myself. Now me and the, and the, and the dog. Yeah. Me and the dog and the dog's been laying next to me. I think he's all sad. He's emo. <laughs> the poor dog is so sad. He, I think he knows everybody left. How do you feel today? can't wait for my house to be really clean and organized. I've got to get rid of the clutter. So you're empty nester from now till Thanksgiving. No, because there's still one in there. No, I mean, yeah, but, just, like, but, but really, you know what I mean? There's not four of them. There's one of them, which she, like, right. probably feels like an empty nester at this point. Yeah, she's but, you know, she's, but, but she don't, she don't drive yet. Mm -hmm. So I got to drive to school. I'm back to driving to school in the morning. Listen, she finna reign supreme, brother. You work for her now. You are literally <laughs> a bellhop. You a bellhop now. Wherever and she wanna go. And, where... and an Uber driver. Yeah, whatever. And an ATM. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, and an ATM as well, of yeah. course, yeah. naturally. Yeah. You the ATM okay. that gotta go get the stuff. Like normally you just go to the ATM, the person gives you money, they go get it. She's like, no, nah, you go get it. I don't feel like it. He's like, what? Yeah, are you... really. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. It's just me, Dad. Pretty much what you guys are saying is I'm her bitch. Pretty, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to say yeah. those words because no, know. but that's true. That's yeah, true. yeah. Enjoy I say it, it lovingly. This yeah. is your last one, right? All right, we got a great show coming up. We really do. And everybody who's in the YouTube chat, I want to hear from you today. 
Let's go back and forth. Let's do it. Everybody listening on 1090, we're celebrating our two-year anniversary. I'm sure you've heard by now. Friday night's high school football with St. John Bosco, number one high school football program in the country right up the road. Uh, Saturday, you got Notre Dame football on 1090. And Sunday, ESPN Radio has two NFL football games on 1090. Today, Keyshawn Johnson is stopping by because now he's the morning show on 1090. And Scott Farrell is stopping by because he's one of the guys who helped us put this radio station back on the air two years ago. So we're celebrating the two-year anniversary of 1090. And in the middle of all of this celebration, if you will, is this crazy-ass Tatis story. When did you ever think the Padres were going to be the lead story on SportsCenter, the front page of any national publication, the talk of every sports radio station around the country? When did the Padres become relevant but controversial? This is an incredible time. Yeah, Yeah. this is crazy. Stick around. Yeah, we're just getting rolling. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio in your view featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew. Every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier 1090.com. Let's welcome back to Main Street Living tax attorney Adam Brewer. Adam, thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Now, it might seem weird that we're having you on because it's not necessarily tax season right now, but what are some things that viewers can do to get ahead of next tax season? Yeah, you're right. I apologize. I think most people would prefer to just forget about taxes for this summer. (laughs) But um, but yeah, if you have some downtime, uh, always a good opportunity to kind of get ahead for next season. So um, really what I'm preaching is... um, you know, just become more knowledgeable about your taxes. You know, everyone come tax season can benefit from having a little more knowledge and uh, just being a little bit less stressed about the whole process of, of getting their taxes filed and getting them paid. You know, all this information is available online, um, but it's really a mess. So it just gets back to my first point, you know, just start with your own taxes. And then if you need to, to you know, dig in on one or two issues, you know, it's just a Google search away. Gotcha. Google search away. Now, you know, uh, let's just say someone is interested, like Danielle is interested in becoming more knowledgeable about her taxes. Like how should someone like her get started? Yeah. So Danielle, you're interested. You should start with, (laughs) you know, your last year's tax return. So I'd say get out your last year's return, uh, form 1040s, you know, going to be the first page there. Um, And really look and see what lines are populated. And then, you know, Make sure you understand those roles. So if you have uh, dividend income and you see, you know, what's a qualified dividend, you know, go in and figure it out. Likewise, if you see anything that's missing. So, you know, a lot of taxpayers now are paying a ton in student loan interest. um, And then they look at their tax return and they go like, well, that's limited to twenty five hundred bucks. You know, that would be a role that you'd want to dig in and and really figure out how it impacts your your actual tax return uh yeah when in doubt save for retirement um it's either you know for most taxpayers it's either going to save you money today uh tax wise or it's going to help you reduce your tax burden in the future also important thank you thank you so much adam we appreciate you yeah thank you
This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. All right, great friends. What's going on? Today is Tuesday. It's August 16th. Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. I just want to encourage everybody who's listening on radio, watching on YouTube, catching up to us on TV at night, uh, any of the audio podcast platforms, people who visit our website, who follow us on social media, everybody, no matter how we all communicate. Just want to remind you guys that if you're playing blackjack or poker, 7 Mile Casino is the place to be because it's only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, number one. When you get down there, if you've never been down, you're going to get there and go, what the hell's going on down here? This place is freaking beautiful. That was my first reaction. Now I go down there a lot. So you know, I'm kind of used to it. But the, the Bay of Chula Vista, for those of us that live in North County that don't go down, dude, it's beautiful. You got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, which is Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza inside of Seven Mile Casino. And it's a completely smoke-free environment. It's a beautiful place, great place, good luck. And if you have any problems with, with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. But Seven Mile Casino is our place. And when you go down there, by the way, I love when you guys take selfies and post them and tag me. That's cool. Let's me know you guys are hanging out down at Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right, Grande, Brown Man. Yeah. We have so much Tatis content today. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should probably just start with, let's, the, the stuff that he took, Alex, you, you got a picture for everybody who's watching on YouTube. Claimed. Well, show us what you got here. This is what he said he took, right? Or what he's. It's what his dad said he took. Trophy ball. <laughs> and on the front of the box, it says close uh, to close to ball, which, you know, listen, I'm not saying that I walk around knowing, you know, a lot of science or like anything about science for that matter. If I look at a medicine and I read it, I'm like, and I'm like, I don't know what this stuff is. So I wouldn't know like, hey, what do you guys got to treat this ringworm over here? Right. But the, know. it's between me, you, Browner, and Tatis is we're not in a drug testing program where exactly. we need to know what's in our system. Dude, right. if they drug tested us around here, they'd be drug testing us to make sure we're on drugs, okay? Right. To inspire right. creativity. Right. So all I'm saying is, is that when you're a $300 plus million dollar baseball star, you don't take anything. You don't take it in you don't ingest it. You don't take it topically. You don't You're going to try to say intravenously. You don't take it any way possible until you consult with a team medical expert. Hold on. Don't gloss over that point right there. Team medical expert. Right. Right. Like I've, I've my buddy who's, who's the offensive coordinator of Cleveland Browns. If his mother gets sick, he calls the team doctor. If his father isn't feeling well, he finds out what's bothering his dad and he calls the team doctor to get some advice. When you're a 300 Again. plus million dollar baseball star, you don't drink a can of soda Thank without you. knowing precisely what's in it because you cannot afford the embarrassment. You can't afford to hurt your team. You can't afford the bad your publicity, brand. your brand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You, you can't take risks like those. Again, again, this is the problem because his dad played Major League Baseball long enough to know, hey, son, don't put anything in your body that we haven't cleared. Well, yeah, his dad dude, also played in a time where right. people were taking his, stuff his, in their bodies. His, and, his, look, and, and look what happened but, to those people. Right. But again, this is why I know he did it. Because <laughs> at, that at that time, his father was alive and well and saw the ramifications yeah. of guys like Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, Alex Rodriguez, the biggest names in baseball. Barry Bonds. Ostracized. Right. Barry Bonds. Roberto Clement, no, Roberto Alomar, <laughs> yeah. Roger Clement, yeah. you name them. Right. But the point, don't you see, yeah. though, but don't you see that like the old school mentality was, hey, take this pill, you'll get bigger and stronger, you'll make a lot more money. So everybody back then went, okay, great, give me the pill. So they took it and it worked perfectly, right? But now because baseball has rid itself theoretically of steroids, for somebody to be doing this now is so 
ridiculously dumb, which we've already established. But yes. think about where they're from. Think about what his father saw. Think about trying to beat the system. So, hey, son, I had a really nice career. Okay, I was good. But you could be an all-time great. Take this. It's an old school mentality. You know? hear something funny? Yeah. yeah. Just put pieces together. Okay? Big old puzzle. We're all putting it together here. Mm-hmm. Talking about his dad. His dad got traded from the Texas Rangers to the St. Louis Cardinals. You want to know what year he got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals? Tell me it's like the year where McGuire, like 99. Hit 61 yeah. home runs. Brad Tatis got traded in 1998 to mm-hmm. the St. Louis Cardinals. Mm-hmm. That is the year that Mark McGuire hit 70 home runs. In oh, 1999, yeah. they were mm-hmm. teammates for a full season mm-hmm. for the first time. And Fernando Tatis Sr. went from hitting 8, 11, 3, and 8 home runs to 34. The year that Mark oh. McGuire hit 65. God. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what? awesome. Now, now, do I have to give you credit because that was so brilliantly put together, or did somebody else do that and you just like you know told it to us? I literally just went to it. baseball reference and I was like, wait, Tatis was with in St. Louis. Was he teammates with McGuire? And yes, he was I didn't know that he was traded the year McGuire hit 70. Yeah. And then they the first year they were teammates, literally the first year they were full teammates. Yeah. Tatis hit a career best 298 a career best 107 rbis a career best 34 home runs incredible. in 1999 incredible wow incredible. that's some, by that's, the way that's by the way Holmes right Wait, there brother 1999 right 1999 that's got to be the mm-hmm. year that junior here is born cuz dad was because if if junior's 23 and that's you know the 98 yeah, he 99 was born January 2nd 99 <laughs> new baby career yeah. best year right. right so so march of 98 think about this march of 98 where is he cuz he starts the season in march of 98 where did he get he went from Texas. where to from the rangers to mm-hmm. st louis rangers. so 98 march of 98 man he's conceiving this child june of uh this is all in theory june of of 2000 uh, june of 99 tatis jr is born 23 years later dad after having his best year most home runs of his career being teammates with mcguire in the middle of the steroid era 23 years later dad is like i got this so in 97 it was his first year he only played 60 games that's when he hit eight home runs Mm -hmm. as a total in 1998 he hit 11 home runs and 58 rbis then his third season with mcguire he hits the 34 home runs. Mm-hmm. And then they were teammates after that. I'm trying to see how long McGuire played. Um, for two more seasons, when he left St. Louis, his final few years, he mm-hmm. never hit more than 15 home runs. Yeah. And he was see, hurt a lot. See, see the thing is. You might have just yeah. cracked the case, man. You might have right. just cracked like, the case. He probably was hurt a lot because he was on all that juice. Mm-hmm. Which is maybe why Tatis's shoulders hurt. <laughs> That's a crazy year, dude. He had a That's 404 insane. on base percentage, a 553 slugging, 34 home runs, and 107 RBIs. Like, if he wasn't teammates with McGuire, who hit <laughs> right. 65 that year, mm-hmm. like he might have had MVP votes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hey, dude, this is great um, on site live feedback research, dude. This is great. I like the way Browner phrased it. You may have cracked the case. Yeah, man. That I mean, I mean, isn't it eye opening when you just look as a whole of his career? Like, but but let me ask you guys a question. Can I just ask you this? You know how the the Dominican players and and the the Latin players have added a certain flavor to Major League Baseball that like the old school yeah. get off my lawn guys are like, right. don't flip a bat, don't disrespect the game. Okay, so that's their perspective. But the younger generation is like, hey, we want more excitement and we love the bat flipping and we love the attitude and we love the the dancing around third base and the right. So so the Latin players have added that fun to baseball. Can we agree on that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because it's as Alex, you have pointed out and you've said it on the show many times. It's cultural. It's the way they play baseball. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it possible that it's also part of the culture 
to say, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting off this island. I'm going to go become a multi-gazillionaire in Major League Baseball. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm A, talented, and B, I'm going to enhance my performance by taking this. Could it be cultural? Or is this an individual case? Because when you bring up the dad and the year that he had, and we bring up Ortiz, and we and we bring up other guys that you know are from the Dominican. I'm just again, I'm piecing it all together without doing research. I'm just, I would, I'm Stephen Thank A. You. Smithing here. I'm bloviating. Welcome back, Stephen A. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have him back on first take. So, is it like a cultural thing? Like, hey, man, we got ringworm. We take this. And by the way, so what? This has that because they're not going to do anything because my son's already the star of baseball. They're not going to do anything to him. I think it's cultural to be represented you know. and have a support system of your family and not have like a real um, team behind you. And what I mean by real team is I like, I don't think that yes, it's, it's I a agree. very cultural thing to be supported and, and represented. I don't, he has a real agent, but does he have like a real team behind him? I don't think so. It's a family thing. And in this particular case, it looks like this family, like we said in the last segment has just surrounded him by saying, yes, let's prop him up as much as he, we can exploded onto the scene, became the face of baseball, was on the cover of baseball games, Gatorade, Adidas, and just was like king of the world. Nothing can stop you. Do whatever you want. That's, I think, the cultural thing here. The steroid thing, I, I don't know. I, I mean, sounds I like... Would it hate the, I would hate <laughs> to think. I would hate to think that the majority of Latin players are doing steroids. Well, that's the majority hate of them that are that doing that, it. I'm no, just no, saying no. that... Like, but your, well, your question is, if I'm, if I'm correct, if I'm incorrect, let me know, because then that means I'm going the wrong direction with this. What you're, you're questioning is, is the culture in Latin America to get out of Latin America is to do whatever it takes? Yeah, I think that's my question. And in, and in, and in terms of whatever it takes, ringworm cream, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I also think right? that, the magic elixir. Yeah. Don't we all like Tatis is different, though. Tatis had the dad. Tatis, you know. He had a right. He's not some kid who 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 was playing on a dirt field with with yeah. no shoes. No, yeah. but everybody, yeah. but everybody thinks that like because his father played major league baseball, that his his son is going to take the next step forward. Like he was a good player, but the son's going to be a great player. Right. Yeah, but but maybe the father, maybe we've underestimated the Marinovich ish stuff that the father would do. If that reference makes any sense know- to anybody. But now that thanks to Detective Alice, we know his daddy wasn't good either. Well, he was juicing, baby. Yeah. Look at your shirt. Yeah, Team Juice. Look at Browner's shirt. Browner is on Team Juice. Say Team Tatis. I show sure am. I show sure am. Till they till they bury me, Team Juice. You know what? I'll let your boy. You know what? That's a good one. Um, the Team Juice t-shirts are on KaplanandCrew.com in our merch no, shop. Not. Why not? No, no, they got taken oh, down because I lost. Them. Oh, that's right. So they're done. Now Team Juice has another meaning. Right. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> that if you're a, a supporter mm-hmm. of Tatis, you just get a Team Juice t-shirt. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This That's whole funny. thing is uh, – but, yeah, I mean, we haven't even played. What no, let's play. We're going to start – here, let's start jumping into it. Here goes. goes. Um, before we get there, I do want to just remind everybody about our friends at West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. Hey, Browner, before the show started, uh, we were doing pre-roll videos for YouTube and for audio podcast. And uh, we were talking about West Coast. And I was saying I met up with Brian yesterday. And we think maybe next Thursday, what do you think about getting down to the store and uh, getting like I volunteer for something? Yeah, you got volunteer for something. But uh, the way I'm selling it is it's kind of like, hey, football season <laughs> is about to kick off. Let's get ourselves ready for football season. Let's talk about what we're going to make Barbecue. Yeah, for the first week of football season. You know, I'm down. I'm down. Like I'm for, down. He always treat me well down there. I eat good down there. So I can go down there. I'll go down there any day. Like, for example, it's next Thursday. And mm-hmm. um, and then when football season kicks off, the NFL's regular season kicks off. It's Buffalo versus the Rams on a Thursday night. Maybe he does like some Buffalo chicken something. And then he does some like really good, like carne asada tacos or something. A really little Buffalo, a little LA. What do you think? I like it. I like it. I like it. I mean, as long as they're chargery. Yeah. Chargery. Yeah. Make sure you charge that flavor up. Oh, please. See what I'm doing there. Yeah. Very nice. Just keep mm-hmm. supporting that team. Good idea. Bolt up. Yep. West Coast BBQ Shop. Gotta get a bolt up here. Gotta get a bolt. Hey, Dean, holla at me. Real estate. <laughs> West Coast BBQ Shop.com and follow them on Instagram, West Coast.BBQ. All right, Alex, which, which audio would you like to start with here today? Yeah, sure. Let's go in order where Tatis, uh, hold on, let me take this down, where Tatis' father uh, explains what's happening. Okay, and this is all in Espanol, see? Yeah, if you're watching, it's, um, 
It's on the screen. Yeah, but if you're not, let's let's all listen to it. Should I should I read it in English for people that are listening, or should I just let it go in Espanol? Let and it go, everybody... and then we could say what he said. All right, generally. Okay, go ahead. Lo que involucra a Junior es un esteroide que contiene un spray que se llama trofo, Trofobol, que es un spray tópico, es algo tópico para la piel y sirve para varias, varias cosas más. En realidad, el niño le sale un hongo en el cuello, se compra el spray y se lo pone. El spray contiene un esteroide. El error, ¿dónde está? En no leer en realidad que es lo que es, aparentemente lo hace culpable de algo totalmente desconocido. Eh, el spray contiene un esteroide, se le va totalmente al cuerpo, eh, le hace una prueba, entonces ya dio positivo por eso. Yo creo que no era la forma para destruir realmente la imagen de un jugador eh, por una tontería, por una sencillez como esa. All right. So ultimately, for those of you who are not as fluent as I am, mm -hmm. it comes down to this. We sprayed this topical stuff on Junior's neck. It does contain the steroid. There is that admission. We didn't know. You know, we didn't know it contained the steroid. How are Even though it said it on yeah, the box. We, we've got, you know, pictures of a box. It pretty much says it on the box, but whatever. We didn't know. We're, we're playing dumb. But, but what's what's pissing me off now, this is dad, is why would you try and destroy this player's reputation for something that is so minor? It's such a nothing little thing that you're going to ruin his reputation. It's so dumb. Like, that's their perspective. Their perspective is mm -hmm. you're doing this to hurt him. Why would you do that to hurt him? That's what dad is saying. And he goes off more on that particular aspect of the conversation. Ah, right. Esto realmente lo que ha sido es una catástrofe para el béisbol. Existe sí, algo eh. que se llama la, la envidia, sí. eh, la hipocresía, eh, de parte de muchos compañeros también, la hipocresía eh, eh, y la misma envidia que despierta Junior. En realidad, lo que se ha hecho, lo que se ha hecho aquí para el béisbol y para el nombre de, de, de Tati Junior, en realidad, esto ha sido totalmente un atropello. Sí. Es un momento muy difícil en realidad, ya que la imagen de Junior eh, queda totalmente por el, por el piso. So, it, God, this guy's un, this guy's unbelievable. Right. So, essentially, for those of you again not quite as fluent as me and Browner, his reputation is being run over. He, um, everybody is jealous of him. It is a catastrophe for baseball. The hypocrisy. Right. It's total hypocrisy. So the dad is now fighting baseball, essentially telling them what you're doing to my son is only going to hurt your game and your league. And again, unless I just don't understand it, I think they are way, way overestimating who he is. He's a good baseball player who's hurt a lot. When he's not hurt, he hits a lot of good home runs and he makes a lot of really exciting plays. And he's I think a if you're young guy, if you're Tati Senior, you're looking at it this way: like he's on the he was on the verge, and I don't believe it. I'm just trying to look at it from his perspective. Mm -hmm. He's on the verge of coming back for a major playoff push for the you know the most talked about team in baseball at the moment after they acquired Soto. Yes, he's on the verge nice of coming well. back mm -hmm. for this playoff push. You're going to put them on national television because people want to see Soto, Tatis, and Machado play together. Mm -hmm. You're going to have mm -hmm. this team in the playoffs with your face of baseball finally in the playoffs in a real legitimate playoff with fans in the stands, mm -hmm. and you're going to suspend them for this? For a little fungus cream? <laughs> that's that's. I think that's what he's trying to say. He is. That is what, and he I think, yes, that's that's what he's saying. Yes, that's what he's saying. That is what he's saying. But do you guys, <laughs> but the question is, do you believe that Tatis used this inadvertently as a ringworm cream, or do you believe that he was taking a performance enhancing drug? And based on what we talked about earlier, where you go battle baseball and you go, no, 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 no. It was pure accident, pure accident. And they go, okay, we understand made a mistake 30 games versus nothing I can really do about it. So give me my full 80. I think, 
that this is a true case of his father and his family wildly overestimating his importance to baseball. I, I mean, they may they might have wildly overestimated his importance to the Padres after they got Juan Soto. Well, like, but I think what Alex says is right on. Think about it from their perspective. Gatorade probably going to be gone. BMW probably going to be gone. Dairy Queen ads probably going to be gone. The money Adidas. to be made okay, off the so, field oh, wait, is now likely it. gone. So let me so let me ask the question to you too, because right. Alex is correct with taking the question in that direction. You got thirty seconds. So, Do it. So why would baseball hurt itself? Who's jealous in the league front office and the testing policy that one and him popped? Who? Who? Tell me, Dad. Tell me. Hmm? You put that on the podcast. Who in the league wants you because of his name out of it? <laughs> you test positive, you test positive. It is what yeah. it is. Right. I mean, whether... Who, who in the league? Right. Manford? Inadvertent Who was it? Jeter? Who was it? All right, everybody hold on a second because now Browner's on a roll. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studio. Is Scott Farrell coming up next on yes. the show? All right, Scott Farrell yeah. celebrating the two-year anniversary of 1090. Next, this is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino studios. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. The Rich Eisen Show airs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. An engaging blend of insightful football expertise with an offbeat mix of humor and pop culture while continuing to attract the most recognizable names in sports and entertainment. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney.
call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60 second timeout with Haley Stasiak. The San Diego Wave dropped their match against the Orlando Pride on Saturday, one to nothing. The Wave got off to a quick start, notching their first shot in the fifth minute by Alex Morgan. San Diego made 19 shots to Orlando's eight throughout the match and applied the pressure, but Orlando was able to find the net in the 23rd minute, which would be enough for the win. The Wave are 7-5-4 in the NWSL this season. They sit at third in the league with 25 points behind the Houston Dash in second, also with 25 points, and the Portland Thorns in first with 28 points. Kansas City sits in a close fourth with 25 points as well. San Diego closes out their home matches at Torero Stadium on Saturday against Houston. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Calvin and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. What's going on to all the great friends that watch the show on television here on Cox Your View? What you're about to see will never be heard on radio, won't be seen on YouTube, no audio podcast. This is just for you here on Cox Your View. Hey to all the great friends out there that watch on Cox Your View. You might be in San Diego, Orange County, L.A., Santa Barbara. We're happy to have everybody here. What we love to do in this time is it's a Cox exclusive. This is stuff you're only going to see here on Cox. Not going to hear this on radio on 1090. Not going to see it on our YouTube channel. Not going to hear it on any of the audio podcast platforms. This is just for you guys that watch on Cox Your View. A really big show coming to the Scottish Rights Event Center in Mission Valley in San Diego. If you love trading sports memorabilia or buying or selling, this is going to be the place for you. It's coming up on August 6th and 7th. And here's the guy running the entire operation. Here's Joe Oliveri, known to his friends as Joe O from SD Collectibles, who's running this show. Hey, Joe, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Scott. Always a pleasure. Yeah, my my pleasure, man. Let, let's talk about this. Um, tell us about why people need to know about your show, SD Collectibles, on August 6th and 7th. Well, we have a great show coming up August 6th and 7th as it's at the Scottish Rite Event Center, like you had mentioned, right there in Mission Valley. We have over 130 tables that will be at this show. We also have Paul Lowe signing autographs on Saturday. We have Steve Garvey and Raleigh Fingers, which will be there on Sunday doing in-person autographs. We just have a really great collection of some of the biggest and best of the hall of the community, the card collecting community coming out there August 6th and 7th, showing their cards, showing their collectibles. There'll be a lot of memorabilia out there. And really what we look at it as is something for every collector. Yeah, when you say every collector, is it, it from what I understand and looking at the website sdcollectibles.com, it's not just purely sports cards. Is that right? That's correct, Scott. We have sports cards, memorabilia, autographed items, quite a few unique autographed items and memorabilia. But we also have Pokemon, a large selection of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering. There'll be vendors there that have comic books. As I mentioned, there are several autograph signers that will be there. We also have JSA, which will be on site for both Saturday and Sunday doing in-person authentication, same day services. Well, that's awesome because for me, the one thing I know I'm most, most interested in, and I know a lot of people who are watching right now have the same thing. If you've got a piece of sports memorabilia that you um, are willing to part with, but you don't have authentication, like I have this Marshall Falk football, the year that he broke uh, the record where he was over a thousand yards rushing and receiving for the Rams in 2000. I've also got this basketball sitting right here that is signed by every Los Angeles Laker of the 2002 world championship team. So Shaq, Kobe, Phil Jackson, 
I don't really honestly know if they're authentic. I think they are. It's just, I don't have the paperwork so I can bring this stuff to your show and get it authenticated on site. Is that right? That's correct. You can bring your, your autographed items, whether it's memorabilia, such as those basketballs, footballs, baseballs, bats, carbs, photos. You can bring them right to the show Saturday or Sunday. Stop by the JSA booth. Chris would be happy to help you there. He'll be on site with his team and they can authenticate different items that you have that have autographs so that you can find out one, if it's real and two, it just gives it that much more value when it is authenticated. What if I get it authenticated and I want to sell it? Is there a way for a private person like myself? I say private. I mean, like, you know, I'm not in the business. Can I sell this stuff? Yeah, you sure can. There's a couple of different ways to do that. I mean, obviously there's some online ways to do that that take a lot of time and, and a whole different set of really procedures. But one of the great things that you can do, we have tables available and we have options for everyone. We do have some vendor tables available, six, eight, and 12 foot tables. You can bring your items down there to sell. Uh, you can bring your cards, your memorabilia, and so on. If you have some memorabilia items like you're showing there, Scott, you can get them authenticated right at JSA, bring them over to your table, and you can put them out there for all of the attendees to see and uh, see if you can make a deal on selling it or possibly trading it for something that you have a little more interest in. All right. Well, while you're talking, I know Alex is putting up on the screen for everybody, the website, it's sdcollectibles.com, sdcollectibles.com, information about where, when, who's going to be there signing autographs, how you can get authenticated, how you can buy a table and space if you want to sell your own collection. Uh, Joe, this is going to be a fun show. This is going to be really cool. Uh, give us any uh, final thoughts, things you need people to know before you roll. Well, one of the great things is it's a family friendly event. When you come to our shows, you'll see a lot of people, both the parents and the kids showing them around because there's something for everyone. There's bargain boxes of cards that are anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar up. And then if you're one of those bigger collectors that likes to find those unique cards, maybe those graded cards, those gem mint 10, there's going to be thousands and thousands of those on display, as well as what's called the trading card game, the TCG with Pokey, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and so on, comic books, as I mentioned, autograph memorabilia and such. You know, if I can give a special thank you to some of those in our community that have helped support our event, Stacked Packs, big supporter and sponsor of our event, uh, Pokey Familia, J-Lo Collectibles, SD Sportsmen, and OC Dugout. Those those folks really helped support our event and they'll be at the show. So if you have an opportunity to come out and attend, come by and, and say hello to those folks that have vendor tables set up. Joe, it sounds like it's going to be a great event on August 6th and 7th. The website is SD Collectibles and we'll see you down there. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Locally owned and operated. Not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie cutter radio station. Crap. We simply say to those stations... You, the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Home of Guiding Hands helps San Diego community in that we're a resource for families. A lot of times when families first identify that their child, their loved one, might have an intellectual or developmental disabilities, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And we're here to help guide people through that process, to show them what a thriving life their loved one can have. Uh, it's a passion I share having a daughter with a disability. I really love the place that I live at. Because of Home of Guiding Hands, I was able to move out of my parents' house and into a beautiful home that I love living in. And so like, if you have an independent living service coordinator, they will help you like learn more about being independent and they help guide you through different things. They've helped me with um, lots of encouragement and love. Um, they've also given me an eyelash worker who is an amazing person and I love her so much. She's great. I could tell you the first, I think, week or so, I wasn't feeling very confident in myself. 
the first couple of nights, I was like, oh, this is scary. But I look back on it now and I'm like, this is so easy. Main Street Living celebrates diverse abilities in partnership with Home of Guiding Hands, supporting the special needs community for over 55 years. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk.